Hey everybody, it is Wednesday, October 12th, 2022. Welcome to the NFL Fantasy Football Show presented by Subway. Try the Subway Series menu. Your pick of 12 irresistible subs. It's me, your man, MG Marcus Grant, joined by Michael F. Florio and the specialist. Woo, hey, we got to get a camera shot of the specialist. Look at this. Wow, cast of dozens that help us put this show on each and every week. I guess each and every day, pretty much at this point, Florio. Yeah. We get Tuesdays <laughs> off, but they don't. But, but they don't. <laughs> Good on you. We appreciate you. Absolutely. Uh, we got plenty to talk about on the show today. We'll have some heroes and villains for week six. We'll go through all of the week six games. We'll also have some sleepers, some streamers, and some trade targets. It's by weeks, which is weird. For, for the average fantasy football manager, by weeks stink because you're really having to shuffle your lineup. For us, it means there's a couple less games to talk about, which you know, <laughs> sh- selfishly sort of helps us keep energized this time of year it definitely looked a lot smaller looking at like the weekly schedule i was like oh this looks more condensed right and and now we're hearing that uh if if they're mariners and and they have a game four Mm -hmm. we're gonna get a later start in that game in the seattle game for football so like we might have two sunday night games well if they keep bringing in robbie ray in the ninth (laughs) inning there won't be a game four i'm just throwing that out there sorry (laughs) did i I hurt somebody's feelings i don't know if we have any mariners fans in the building right now anyway uh we got plenty to talk about so let's get get to it let's start things off with some fantasy headlines and news out of Miami Tua Tungavailoa was back at practice on Wednesday Tua will be throwing and doing individual drills but Mike McDaniel has ruled him out for the week says the Dolphins are planning to start Skylar Thompson that's because Teddy Bridgewater is also still in concussion protocol so with Thompson starting how excited are you about the other pieces there especially the pass catchers uh, not a, not nearly as excited as normal. I, I know Skylar Thompson, he played all right against the Jets. He was kind of thrusted into it unexpectedly. Um, I think Tyreek Hill is still in play because he's Tyreek Hill. Waddle, it, it depends on your other options. I mean, Skylar Thompson, a seventh round rookie that, as you mentioned, had to just come in unexpectedly last week after Teddy Bridgewater left the football game. So Ideally, he understands get the ball to Tyreek Hill, maybe get the ball to Jalen Waddle, but I think it's going to be hard to expect anything close to the normal level of production from either one of those guys this week. Over to New England. This is according to our own Tom Pelissero. Patriots running back Damian Harris is expected to miss multiple weeks because of a hamstring injury. He suffered that last week in the win over the Detroit Lions. So basically, it is Ramondre Stevenson season. <laughs> Steven season, it's Ramondre week. I know everybody across the fantasy space loves him. I'm sure you do as well. I guess the question really is, how high are you willing to rank Ramondre this week? Uh, I I think he's like pushing that like borderline RB1 status right now. I, I don't know if I have him as, say, a top 12 running back, but I think he's in that conversation, I, like probably like top 15 or so, because I know last week he did all of his damage on the ground, but even if they fall behind, I expect him to be heavily used in the passing game. So that gives him a very high ceiling and floor. That passing game work is why we were excited about him coming into Mm -hmm. the season. And now, as you mentioned, with no Damian Harris, he gets a lot of that rushing work, too. I mean, there may be some other guys that sort of get some opportunities, but this feels like Ramondre's show, especially if we're still looking at Bailey Zappi at quarterback, especially against a Browns run defense that was trampled by the Chargers Mm -hmm. last week. This just feels like a big, big week for Ramondre Stevenson. So This could be a game of just... 50 runs like on both sides of the ball. They may be done in an hour and a half. It's going to keep, let's just run the football, keep the clock running, and, you know, don't even turn off the engine of your car. Just keep it running because we're going to be out of here real quick. That gets us to our hero and villain of the week. Let's start with our fantasy hero heading into week six, the guy that will carry your team to victory and maybe deserves a little bit more buzz than he's getting right now. For you, who would that be? Travis Etienne, who I, I know. We were all, uh, myself especially included, was very bullish about him heading into this year. And then the first couple of games happened and it looked like it was the James Robinson show. But the last two weeks, Travis Etienne has been playing more and more for the Jaguars. And last week, he actually played more snaps. He had 53% to 41% for Robinson. They each had 10 carries. Uh, Etienne had five targets to Robinson's two. Robinson finished with less than 40 yards. ETN had 114, so he's becoming more and more utilized. He's very explosive, so 
If he gets anywhere in the neighborhood of 15 opportunities again, I think he can have a really good week. That is making this backfield incredibly confusing because both these yeah. guys can be productive. And now it becomes a question of how game script goes and which guy's going to get more opportunities. But if you have James Robinson, I think you're still starting him based on who else you may have on your roster. And Travis Etienne at this point is deserving of a spot in your lineup as well. I'm going to go with Eno Benjamin. And this is definitely a short-term opportunity for Benjamin. This is because the Cardinals are really banged up in the backfield. James Conner dealing with rib issues. His status still uncertain as of now. Daryl Williams also left that game with an injury, although you can make the case that Benjamin had surpassed him for the RB2 duties in Arizona, but a good matchup against the Seahawks defense that has been just purely awful all season long. Now we'll see if the Cardinals can actually score a decent number of points in the first half. That's something they have not been able to do. But either way, Florio, the, the thing about Benjamin, he will get involved in the passing game. He can contribute as a pass catcher. So even if game script is negative, that doesn't necessarily rule him out for being productive. Yeah, and, and right now, if James Conner sits, the other running backs that are healthy there are guys that they just signed this week. So I think Eno Benjamin will dominate volume this week. They were working out Corey Clement, among others, earlier in the week, just as a contingency plan for Sunday. So that gets us to our fantasy villain of the week, the guy who is going to you know, threaten to sink California into the ocean so he can have <laughs> oceanfront property in Arizona, which, by the way, was actually the plot of the original Superman movie in the late 1970s. <laughs> I'm not making that up. Anyway, who's the guy who's going to be the fantasy villain this week? I don't know if he has Oceanside property anywhere or in Arizona, <laughs> but I think Najee Harris has been a very big disappointment to start the year. And in this week's Start Sit article, I wrote more about Najee Harris than any other player, just trying to figure out why he is struggling so mightily and his explosiveness just isn't what it was last year on the ground. But the big thing is he's just getting less usage in the passing game. Last year uh, was averaging almost five targets per game, even if you take away that big game. This year he's well below four. Uh, so I, I have a lot of concerns about Najee Harris. And then he's facing a Bucks defense that has allowed the fewest fantasy points to running backs this year and have been in that category of like allowing the fewest to, for years to running backs. So I think it's a... Very scary matchup for a struggling player. The other part is Mike Tomlin saying they want to get Jalen Warren even more involved. Yeah. And he's been taking about a third of the snaps. So that means potentially fewer opportunities for Najee Harris, who, as you mentioned, is already struggling. For me, it's going to be Justin Herbert, who's been outstanding so far this year. But for as much as the Broncos offense has been awful, the Broncos defense has actually been pretty good. And the one thing we have learned through the first month plus of the season is don't challenge Pat Sertan the second. Just don't do it. Yeah. And you know, we're still waiting to see what's going to happen with Keenan Allen. Is he back? He has been just missing ever since injuring his hamstring in week one. So that has sort of limited this passing game. There's not a lot of speed on the outside. I mean, they've got the big body in Mike Williams. We've seen DeAndre Carter make some plays, but they really are lacking speed on the outside, which makes them a little bit easier to defend. So you're starting Justin Herbert because I don't know that you have a better option, really. But yeah. I don't like his matchup at all this week. I get it. And and with no like their offense has been much more through the ground game than I anticipated early on. Last week it was Austin Eckler with over 170 rushing yards, a career <laughs> high. So it may be that that could be the route the Chargers take in that game on Monday night. Let's get to some of our game previews. We'll start with Thursday night football. It's the Washington Commanders at the Chicago Bears, 815 Eastern on Prime Video and on NFL+. Plus. And when we saw this question, our, our producers put this together for us. They thought it was going to be one way, but instead it was the other way. Better streaming option, Carson Wentz or Justin Fields? It's worth mentioning, too, that our producer's a Bears fan, True. or one of them. Uh, and <laughs> I, I, I'm going with Justin Fields. In fact, in our Fantasy Live League, Derek Carr is my starting quarterback. I had to go to the waiver wire. The best two names available were Fields or Wentz, and I picked up Justin Fields. Uh, he's been throwing a little bit more, still not what we want to see, but over 21 attempts in the last two weeks. And then I just like him because what he can do with the on with his legs on the ground. Like, he led the Bears in rushing yards last week, and that was even after they took away a very long touchdown run that was super impressive. So uh, I'm going with Justin Fields here. I'm actually going to double up on that and say uh, Justin Fields as well. I do like that he's running a little bit more this year than he did last year. Right now, he actually is Chicago's second leading rusher. That comes with an asterisk, though, because David Montgomery missed the game. Otherwise, it yeah. probably wouldn't be the case. But still, he is actually getting out. I think he's 
number six among quarterbacks in rushing yards so far this season. So he is doing some things with his legs. And as you mentioned, they actually let him throw the ball a little bit more the last couple of weeks. And he was very efficient last week throwing it. So as long as he can keep that up against a commander secondary that's been bad, I think, I think there's some opportunity for Fields to be a streamer in week six. Who will be the top scoring running back on Thursday night? This one felt pretty easy to me. Yeah, it's David Montgomery by default um, because <laughs> Khalil Herbert – wasn't really used much when David Montgomery returned. And then on the Washington side of things, uh, J.D. McKissick led them in targets. Brian Robinson led them in carries. And Antonio Gibson led them in total yards. They all had single-digit fantasy points. They all played less than half the snaps. It is an absolute fantasy nightmare in that. And now they're talking about using Gibson as a return man. It is it stay far away from this back. I want no parts of the Washington backfield. In fact, I believe I may have dropped Antonio Gibson in a couple of leagues just because I, I can't deal with it anymore. But I'm all about David Montgomery here, too. We saw last week when he came back. He is still the RB1 in Chicago. He is going to get a heavy workload. As you mentioned, Khalil Herbert, sort of not completely relevant once Mont Montgomery is back. So I think this is an easy call there. Who will be the top scoring wide receiver on Thursday night? I think this came down to one of two players because I'm not going with any <laughs> Bears receiver. Um, I'm going to go with Curtis Samuel, though, who I know his explo like his floor isn't as high as some of the other options in this game. Um, but he has led the commanders. I almost said the, the football team. But he's led the <laughs> commanders in targets every single game this year. He's one of a few wide receivers with at least seven targets in every game. I know the last two weeks... We haven't quite gotten what we wanted out of that volume, but I'm going to trust it here with Curtis Samuel. I wavered between Curtis Samuel and Terry McLaurin, and instead I settled on McLaurin because he is getting more downfield targets. Samuel right now is just sort of an underneath guy, and the last few weeks, he hasn't been getting those rushing attempts. That was sort of yeah. why he was really interesting the first couple of games of the season. That has gone away in this offense, and I don't know if that's because now they're getting their running backs back and, and using three guys in that backfield, but I think... I don't know if this is the big breakout game for McLaurin that we've all been waiting for, but I do think he's going to get more downfield shots, a chance to pick up yardage and chunks, and hopefully a, a few receptions means he puts up a decent fantasy number for you. I know he's been he's been frustrating so far this year. He he had we know how great he is. This isn't a Terry McLaurin thing. This no. is a, a Carson Wentz in that offense. This thing. is a Washington Commanders offense thing, without a doubt. All right, that seems like a good spot to catch our breath, take a quick break. We will come back, and we will keep going with our game previews, including the Jaguars and the Colts, which, I don't know, seems weird and spooky and, and you know crazy things happen. So stick around for that and more on the NFL Fantasy Football Show. It's time for Look to the Data, presented by Intel. We got this information from our NFL research team. Jamar Chase through five weeks. His fantasy point-per-game production is down in 2022, almost four and a half points from where he was the same time last year. Points per game ranking is 16th versus 8th in 2021, but way more targets. Had 35 targets to this point last season, 53 right now, which actually puts him fifth, whereas last year he was tied for 29th. So the... The big plays haven't been there. The targets have been there. The big plays have not. Said begs the question, at this point, are you trading for or trading away Jamar Chase? I'm trading for Jamar Chase all day. Um, I, I believe in his talent. I believe in the connection there with Joe Burrow. What I'm not crazy over is Zach Taylor and his offensive scheme. Because when you watch the Bengals games, and like I went back and watched a couple of them solely to see what's going on with Jamar Chase, the defense is lining up with deep safeties on no matter what side of the field Jamar Chase, like they're following him. They're not following T. Higgins. They're daring the Bengals because that's how scary Jamar Chase is. He can literally change a game with one or two plays. So defenses are like petrified of him and the Bengals are just allowing this to kind of happen. And I'm like, yo, move them around, put T. Higgins next to him, which they started to do last week, which I thought was an encouraging sign, but I'm still going to believe in the talent of Jamar Chase there. And I, I would try to get him now because his price is probably lower than it's been at any point this season. You may have a frustrated manager who is willing to listen to an offer. If I have Jamar Chase, I'm holding on to him. <laughs> if I don't, I'm trying to acquire him because like you said, the talent profile is too good. The Bengals offense is going to start making big plays and at some point they're going to start using Jamar Chase as more than you know a glorified possession receiver which is kind of what he's been so far this season so I'm not worried about him I know it hasn't been what you wanted it to be but I think it's going to be all right in the long term that gets us back to our game previews the 49ers at the Falcons and and first off 
George Kittle, who once upon a time was very much in the category of elite fantasy tight ends, I don't know if he's that anymore. He certainly hasn't given us any elite production in some time. What's your confidence level in starting him this week? Uh, I don't think he's an elite tight end right now. I think there's only two elite guys at, at this position in Kittle. Uh, I'm sorry, in Kelsey and Andrews. But I still think Kittle's in that like next group of tight ends. He's in there with like uh, Zach Ertz, Dallas Goddard. I'll put David Njoku in that group as well. I, I still think tight end is too weak to get away from George. Like he's not going to be what you want him to be when you drafted him, but it's too weak of a position to get away from him. That's the thing that you're starting him every week because the ceiling is still mm -hmm. relatively high. If they start feeding him some targets, it's just the target share hasn't been there like it has been in the past. And the yards after the catch have not been there. That's been a big part of his game. He hasn't really had that so far this year, but because as you mentioned, the tight end pool is so shallow and George Kittle's ceiling is so high. I think you're starting him, especially in what, at least on paper, is a good matchup for him this week against Atlanta. Do, do you think the the yards after the catch haven't come because of this injury that he was dealing with in coming I into do, the year? I do wonder about that. And not just this injury, but you know, he's been beat up a lot the yeah. last couple of years. And you wonder if it's the accumulation of all these injuries that is sort of slowing him down. Because he was just a monster after the catch with the ball in his hands. And we haven't seen that so far this season. Elsewhere, though, what else are you doing in this Niners-Falcons game? I, I have, and this pains me to say, Marcus, I have Drake London as a sit this week. I sat him in one of my, one of my leagues already. It, it hurts, right? It's not his fault. It's, it's because of Arthur Smith and because of Marcus Mariota, but we need production at, at the end of the day in fantasy football, and, and Drake London just hasn't provided it the last two weeks. His two weeks combined is less than 11 fantasy points. And it's because Arthur Smith is trying this weird strategy where he's like, I'm going to try to beat you without using my best players. I don't get it, but while he's doing it, we need to respond and react accordingly in fantasy. And then he's going up against, I know they're banged up right now, Marcus, but that Niners defense is still very, very scary. It is a bad matchup for a player that's not getting a lot of opportunity. Nothing points to this being an optimistic setup for Drake London. Like I said, I sat him. I think I sat him in favor of Alan Lazard. I mean, that's... That's sort of where I am right now. I thought now. you were going to say Robinson, and I was going to be like, too far. <laughs> <laughs> no, no I'm, not, I'm not doing that. Alan Lazard, and even that I'm not super confident in. Patriots at the Browns, and we talked about it at the start of the show, but Ramondre Stevenson is absolutely a must-start this week if you have him. It looks like he is going to dominate the backfield opportunities with Damian Harris out of action for the next few weeks, it looks like. He's going to catch the football out of the backfield. We saw last week against the Lions, it was really a heavy emphasis on the run. They're not going to let Bailey Zappi throw the ball 25, 30 times. That's just not going to happen. So against a run defense that has been shaky at best this year, the interior of the Browns defensive line has not been very stout. This is an easy, easy call to start Ramondre Stevenson. Jets and the Packers. Packers still sort of licking their wounds after last week losing in London to the Giants. Now they've got the Jets at home. What are you doing? They're probably going to take it out on the Jets. So, oh, man. Um, but <laughs> I, I think in this game, I'm going to sit A.J. Dillon. And coming into the year, and especially after week one, we, were, we thought, myself especially included, thought that A.J. Dillon would have standalone value, be an RB2, maybe even better in fantasy football. And that just hasn't been the case. And last week, it bottomed out. He played... Uh, 31% of the snaps, that was a season low. He had six carries, season low, no targets, season low. And then he had a season low in fantasy points as well, but he's also been in single digits four straight games now. I don't think you drop him because I think he's one of the elite handcuffs if anything happens to Aaron Jones. But I think right now you, you can't start him in fantasy either. In what I thought was going to be more of a 50-50 split, it's definitely starting to swing more in the direction of Aaron Jones. And A.J. Dillon has not been very productive over the last couple of weeks. Jaguars and the Colts. Yeah, I said this is going to be kind of a weird game because for whatever reason, the Jaguars seem to have the Colts number lately. They did it at the end of last season. They did it at the start of this season. So now they get another shot at him. And I'm saying just beware of Michael Pittman. I get it. With buys, you probably have to start him. But the Jags secondary has not been awful. Throw in the fact that Matt Ryan has been pretty bad for much of the season. And... Indianapolis seems to have found a secondary receiver in Alec Pierce, which means they don't have to force targets to Michael Pittman. I do think he has upside potentially, but I also think that this is a week 
where the floor potentially is very, very low. So if you do have a lot of depth at wide receiver, maybe you consider it. But if you got to start him, understand that the numbers might not be what you want them to be this week for him. Vikings at the Dolphins. We talked about Tua Tungavailoa not being available this week, but working out on the side with the team. Skylar Thompson expected to get the start. What does that mean for, say, Jalen Waddell? I think you should be aware of Jalen Waddell. And I know I'm bringing a lot of doom and gloom on this uh, Wednesday. <laughs> it's, it's a gloomy day in L.A., which yes. is also my favorite weather. Um, fun fact. But I, I think Jalen Waddell is someone that you maybe can't get away from because the upside is so high. But last week in a game where Thompson threw 33 times, Waddle saw just three targets for 23 yards, like scored just over five fantasy points. Again, the upside is high enough where I get if you have to start him, you might not have a better option, but you might not get the production you're used to out of Jalen Waddle. Ideally, Skylar Thompson just lets those guys get out in space and let them operate, but yeah. it just it seems hard to believe that they're going to give you the same kind of production that you expected when you drafted them, probably pretty high in your fantasy league. Time for another break. When we come back, more start sits, bewares, all that good stuff as we continue our game previews next on the NFL Fantasy Football Show. NFL Plus is the league's new exclusive video streaming subscription service. NFL Plus has your game day covered with live, local, and primetime regular season and postseason games right on your phone or tablet. NFL Plus is available in the NFL app and at NFL.com. Subscription plans start at just $4.99 per month. Fans can visit plus.nfl.com and sign up for a free trial of NFL Plus today. Bengals and Saints next up on our whip around here. And let's start with Taysom Hill, who is fantasy football's favorite or maybe least favorite <laughs> chaos agent, especially after what he did last week. What kind of encore can we expect from him against Cincinnati? I have no idea. And I, <laughs> I truly believe that is the correct answer. Like, I think he is ul the ultimate mystery box in fantasy football. He could get you less than two fantasy points, or he could get you 35 like he did last week. It's why, though, I, I think, like, if you've been one of these teams streaming tight ends, he's worth an op uh, a shot because no streaming tight end brings a safe floor, but none bring a ceiling like Taysom. That's the thing. And I, I kind of like him as a streamer this week. Cincinnati has not been great against the tight end position, and there's talk in New Orleans that they want to get Hill more involved in the offense. I don't know if that means as a pass catcher. I don't know if that means he takes more snaps at quarterback or what, but if he's going to get more touches in a matchup that is semi-favorable. He's worth at least a streaming shot. I did see a funny tweet. I think he's played more snaps at quarterback than tight end, but he's also played more snaps on special teams than anything. So people were like, he should just count as a DST now. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Although, no, I don't like that because that means we're going to get <laughs> tweets about it. Like, why don't you make Taysom Hill? Like, no, we're not doing that. We're not doing that at all. I, I will say this. Elsewhere, I think you got to beware of Alvin Kamara this week. Yeah. Just because the Bengals up front have been very stout. They're not giving up a lot of rushing yards. I mean, look, they, they held Lamar Jackson's about 55 rushing yards this past week. So I, I, I liked last week the usage that Kamara was getting, even if he didn't score the touchdowns this week. I'm not sure it's going to be quite the same. I also want to keep an eye out on some of the other injuries there in New Orleans. You know, what is up with Chris Olave, Michael Thomas, Jameis Winston? That will have something to do with it, but I'm just not super confident in Alvin Kamara this week. Ravens at the Giants. Both teams escaping with wins on Sunday. And for you, what's the thing that we should pay attention to? This is a tough game because we know who to start in Baltimore. We know... Saquon Barkley is the only real reliable starter on the Giants, but I do think the Giants receivers here are sleepers. And the reason I can't really talk about any in, in particular is because they're all kind of up in the air. Uh, right now, I think Darius Slayton would be the one that I would like the most just because he's a field stretcher. And the Ravens have really struggled against wide receivers, especially downfield. And this is probably going to be a game where the Giants could be playing catch up and having to throw more. Uh, but I will mention Wondell Robinson returned to practice last week. He practiced today in a limited fashion. If he can suit up, he is one that I would definitely be excited for. And then I have to mention Kadarius Tony. But, you have to. But he's still not practicing. Like, come on, Tony. There's so much opportunity. But for now, I think Wandell is the guy. The rules of this show state that you have to mention Kadarius Tony. <laughs> it's in Tony. my contract. It is. You have to mention him <laughs> at least once per show. Bucks and the Steelers. 
I'm going to say that there's a sleeper in here, and it's Rashad White for Tampa Bay. And a couple of weeks ago, you and I know on, on our Sunday show, Cameron Wolf came on and said the Bucks want to use more running backs. We were like, yeah, psh, whatever. And then Rashad White got a whole bunch of targets against the Chiefs, albeit in a losing effort. Then last week, sort of more of the same. Eight touches in back-to-back -back weeks for Rashad White. Still getting a lot of opportunities. And I feel like this is the game, after seeing what the Bills did to the Steelers, I think the Bucks can beat up on the Steelers as well. I expect Tampa to be playing from ahead in the second half. And knowing that they want to save Leonard Fournette for a late season run for the playoffs, this feels like a real good opportunity for Rashad White to get a significant number of touches in the second half. So, look, I'm, when I say sleeper, I'm talking to people in 12, probably 14-team leagues. If you're in an eight-team league, don't start Rashad White and then, you know, come to me complaining about it. That's not – this is not for you. This is deeper leagues, but I think Rashad White has some, some sleeper potential this week. I, I like it. They've been throwing the ball a ton to their running backs. Absolutely. Panthers at the Rams. The Rams, kind of a mess. The Panthers – Trying to pick up the pieces after firing Matt Rule. What are you thinking this week? I think you could start both defenses this week. Uh, the Rams have allowed more fantasy points to defenses than any team in, in football. And then we know the mess that the Panthers are. But for a specific player, I, I think Tyler Higby is just a player that you start each and every week. And uh, when we were talking about George Kittle, I mentioned like the second tier of tight ends. Tyler Higby is firmly in that tier. He had 10 targets last week, 7 catches, 46 yards. We talk about it a lot. The Rams entire offense right now is Cooper Cup and Tyler Higby. And and as long as Higby's getting the volume, he should be in your starting lineup. Cup and Higby are the only two startable Rams right now. No one else from that offense. Matthew Stafford, Allen Robinson, Cam Akers, none of those guys are startable besides Cup and Higby. Cardinals and the Seahawks, big matchup in the NFC West. And I like Rondell Moore as a sleeper. They are starting to get him a lot more involved in recent weeks. Plus, a thing that we have decided on earlier this week is that you can pretty much start everybody against the Seattle Seahawks defense. They are bad pretty much across the board. And watching the Cardinals get the ball in Moore's hands, let him use his athleticism and his speed to make some plays. I think he's got some sleeper potential. If he can get a decent number of targets, maybe even find one in the end zone. But I do like his chance to put up a decent number uh, as a flex option this week for a lot of fantasy managers. We are not done with our game previews. We still got more to go, including a big one in Kansas City with the Bills and the Chiefs. We will dive into that and plenty more on the NFL Fantasy Football Show. An epic one going down at Arrowhead Stadium, the game of the week, at least on paper. The Bills and the Chiefs, a rematch of that amazing um, uh, I would say American League, AFC Divisional <laughs> Playoff game. I know you probably don't like to remember it because nah. it, it did not end well for your squad. But for the rest of us, it was super entertaining. Gabe Davis, the huge game last week, three catches, over 170 yards and a couple of touchdowns. How does he follow that up in week six? I'm not going to say he's going to do another Randy Moss type performance, <laughs> but I think he's going to have a good game. And I think he is someone that you should be starting. He's still leads the Bills in air yards per target. He's second in the NFL behind only Chris Olave, so we know that they're going to take plenty of deep shots with him in a game that could be very high scoring. Uh, and the Chiefs have struggled against receivers this year. We saw Devontae Adams torch them deep multiple times last week. And then let's not forget that Devontae Adams, last time they played, became the first player in NFL playoff history to top 200 yards and four touchdowns against this Chiefs defense. <laughs> I think all of those are valid. I do think Gabe Davis is very much in play this week. I know we talked about the fact that, look, he's going to have big weeks. He's going to have weeks that let you down. But this feels like a game where, again, both teams are going to score a lot of points. They're going to move up and down the field. So that very much puts Gabe Davis in play. Clyde Edwards-Alaire did not score a touchdown, had a, a pretty bad game fantasy-wise against the Raiders on Monday night. Do you trust him against the Buffalo defense? I think, I think so. <laughs> I think Clyde Edwards-Alaire, though, is who he is at this point. Like, there's going to be very down weeks there's going to be very high weeks it it all depends on if he scores a touchdown or not and i know he's not going to score a touchdown every game but even on monday night he had a bad game he was stopped at the one yard line twice like if he gets in on those on those plays we're talking about Clyde edwards layer very different and right that's now. sort of how the season has gone i mean he's splitting snaps essentially three ways when you figure jarek mckinnon isaiah pacheco are there and 
yet somehow he seems to find his way into the end zone, and that has salvaged his fantasy production so far this season. But a game like we saw on Monday night felt inevitable. When you're talking about his kind of sporadic usage, it just felt like one of these games was going to come. I, I say this. Because he's getting looks down near the goal line, I think that makes him worth at least a flex spot, but I'm not super crazy about playing him against a Buffalo defense that's been very good so far. Beyond that, anybody else that you are keeping an eye on for this one? Yeah, I'm very concerned about Juju Smith-Schuster. I, I wrote beware Juju, but then I just, I've kind of changed my tune and I'm just like, sit Juju Smith-Schuster. Like, and, and this isn't even about the matchup. Like, yes, the Bills are very, very good against wide receivers, but this is more about Juju. Like, he's getting eight targets in four of the five games so far this season. He three times has been held in single digits. He had more targets and fantasy points on Monday night, and he has yet to reach 15. So there's not a very high ceiling so far with Juju. The floor has been uh, not very high. I think until we see signs of life from Juju Smith-Schuster, you can get away from him right now. All our thoughts that he could be kind of a wide receiver too in this offense, at least for the first five weeks, have not been there, and, and it is getting hard to wait on him in an offense where they're spreading the football around quite a bit. Sunday Night Football, it's the Cowboys and the Eagles. Mike McCarthy said today that Dak Prescott will do some light throwing after practice. The Cowboys are preparing as if Cooper Rush will get the start on Sunday against the Eagles. So that being said, who scores more points at wide receiver? Is it C.D. Lamb, A.J. Brown, or Devonta Smith? I'm going to go with C.D. Lamb partially because I think the Cowboys are going to be playing from behind in this game. Um, but also, like I know he had a down week in week five. Five catches, 53 yards. He had a 50% target share. Cooper rushed through 16 <laughs> times. Eight of them went to C.D. Lamb. Like The volume is huge for Lamb. The only thing that went wrong last week was the Rams offense literally could do nothing. They, they had no fight in them whatsoever. It was a blowout for the Cowboys, but I don't think that'll be the case this week against the Eagles. No, I don't think that'll be the case at all. I think this is going to be a back and forth game. I think it'll be fairly close throughout. So I'm going to say A.J. Brown is the guy who scores the most points this week. And, you know, I, I, I felt like it was going to be an eagle, either him or Devonta Smith. But I think with that pass rush, part of the success for the Eagles is going to be getting the ball out quickly. And I think if that means they can get A.J. Brown on some one-on-one -on -one matchups, let him use his strength, use his ability after the catch, I think there's potentially a really big game for him there. But look, all three of these receivers should yeah. be in your lineup this week, without a doubt. This is the kind of game, too, that A.J. Brown was brought in for. That's exactly the kind of game he was brought in for. So we'll see if he produces for Philly in this one. I would also say beware of Miles Sanders because last week was not a great week for him. This week, that Dallas defense has been very tough. We saw how much we saw how much they shut down the Rams run game, but the Rams have not been able to muster much of a run offense so far this season. But I do think that Miles Sanders may be in for a tough slog this week against the Cowboys. If he is able to produce, it will be catching the football out of the backfield, which we know he can do. But I just have a sense that this one is going to be on the arm and legs of Jalen Hurts to try to win this one for Philadelphia. Over to Broncos Chargers, Monday Night Football here at SoFi Stadium. And as I point, it's, it's right there. I can see it. I look to my right, and it is right there out the window, SoFi Stadium. The Broncos, kind of a mess. The Chargers somehow survived against Cleveland. What are you doing in this one? I, I think you could start the man with the, your favorite nickname in the NFL, Melgo. It's catching on. I've seen other people using it. I don't know how <laughs> I feel about this. Uh, I think Melvin Gordon is very much in play this week. Uh, he led the Broncos backfield with 55% of the snaps, 15 carries, and three targets in his first game without Javante Williams. Turned it into over 100 yards of production. And what you have to love most of all is he did not fumble. Uh, the Chargers have allowed the most fantasy points to running backs after being in the top two or three in that category last season as well. It is just a team that you can run the ball against. And Marcus, this is also a, another one of our favorite narratives. What's that? It's a revenge oh, game. That's right. Melvin Gordon against the Chargers. <laughs> Plus, I don't know if Nathaniel Hackett wants to keep letting Russ cook because the kitchen is a mess. The ingredients are all burned. It's, it's, it's bad. It's all bad for, for the Broncos offense. Hey, by the way, we mentioned it at the top of the show. There are four teams on a bye this week. It's the Lions, the Texans, the Raiders, and the Titans. And so because of that, we're going to give you some guys to stream, looking at quarterbacks, tight ends, and a defensive streamer. That's generally what it is for the onesie positions across your lineup. So I will say this. I'm going to start, and don't laugh, Jimmy Garoppolo is a streamer this week. Against the Carolina Panthers, it's funny, I, as I scroll Twitter on a regular basis, I feel like there is a vast difference 
in how 49er fans feel about Jimmy G versus how the rest of the football world feels about Jimmy G. I, I, there are a lot of people out there who are like, I will accept no Jimmy G slander and 49er fans just like grit their teeth and like want to you know, smash an egg over their heads. It's this is a situation though against the Falcons where if you are ever going to start Jimmy Garoppolo, this is it. Atlanta doesn't get a lot of pressure on the quarterback. Jimmy Garoppolo, not the most mobile guy, but if you let him stand back there in the pocket, he is going to pick you apart. And if he can get the ball out to Samuel, out to Ayuk, and maybe get George Kittle involved a little bit, I think he can have a very good day. Look, I'd start him over guys like, say, Carson Wentz this week, uh, certainly, over Matthew, well, certainly over Matthew Stafford for mm-hmm. sure. Jimmy G is in play for me in week six. I, I agree. I think it, the matchup is great. And, and if you miss out on Jimmy G or if you're a 49ers fan who doesn't want to get him <laughs> in your starting lineup, I, I think you could pivot to Daniel Jones there. Um, who actually wrote in the start sit as like a a streaming option this week. And I know it sounds gross, but the Ravens have really struggled against quarterbacks. I know they've played better the last couple of weeks, but on the year, they have really struggled in that secondary. Daniel Jones has rushed for at least 21 yards every game, so you're going to get a little bit of production with his legs. It's trusting the matchup here, and I agree with the names that you said. Like, I would play him over, like, Matthew Stafford or if your quarterback's on a bye, something like that. You know how you know it's the bye weeks? You have suggested the streaming Daniel Jones and sleeper for the Giants wide receivers. <laughs> that lets you know that everybody's down some players this week. Over to the tight end streamer. You talked about the Giants. I'm going to talk about a former Giant in Evan Ingram and... Look, tight end, we keep saying it. It's not been great this year, but Ingram's had a couple of nice games so far this season. And when the matchup is right, you can sort of count on him to make some plays. Now, I don't know that you're going to get 15 to 20 points, but if you can get 10 to 12 right now, that's kind of all you want out of a tight end. And out of a tight end streamer, that feels sort of like a win. So the Colts defense has been underwhelming so far this season. I know Trevor Lawrence has had his issues, has been inconsistent, but I would say if you're really hurting at the position, Evan Ingram might be worth a look for you, which is weird to say. I completely, to me, I think he is the top streaming tight end option wow. this week. And and yeah, it might be gross, but he's coming off of his best game of the year. <laughs> so in a good matchup. But if you miss out on him, I think Noah Fant is, is another name that you can go out and pick up. And I'm seeing a lot of people on like fantasy Twitter and stuff talk up Will Disley in this matchup. I, I'm going to pivot and go with Noah Fant, who is coming off of his best game as a member of the Seahawks, where he played a season-high 60% of the snaps. He saw five targets, which is more targets than Will Disley has in any game this season. And he caught three of them for a season-high 49 yards. And the reason why I like Fant and other people like Will Disley is because of the match. Up. The Cardinals have allowed the second most fantasy points to, to tight ends and in yards touchdowns. They're up there as well. So it's just trying to find a, a piece in a hot offense against the struggling defense. A proof that Noah Fant is not doing much this year on the video show. We had no B-roll. Fant. <laughs> I was, was wondering weird. why I, like, I was on yeah, camera the no, whole time. It was, just, it was just Florio on camera because, <laughs> you know, we just don't we don't have highlights of Noah Fant so far this year. Uh, One last one. I got a defensive streamer for you. I would say the Jags against the Colts because, as I mentioned, the Colts seem to not be able to figure out the Jaguars the last few times they've played. Plus, they're really good at getting to the quarterback, and Matt Ryan has been a nightmare. I mean, we talked about the number of turnovers that Matthew Stafford has had. Matt Ryan has turned the ball over quite a bit himself, so if they can get pressure on him, get a sack, maybe force a fumble, maybe get him to throw it to the wrong color jersey. Again, if if you're hurting defensively and you need some help, The Jaguars could be a nice pickup, and I'm sure they are very widely available on waiver wires this week. Hey, we are almost done, but we come back, we're going to talk some trade wins, guys to trade for, guys to trade away, plus some sleepers to wrap things up on the NFL Fantasy Football Show. Bye weeks are here, injuries have happened, chances are the waiver wire in your league looks pretty thin, but you still got to figure out ways to improve your team. So it's about time to start talking about making some trades. So we each have some guys we want to trade for and some guys we want to trade away. For you, Florio, who's a guy that you should be looking to try and acquire right now? Uh, the player that we both had to apologize, myself <laughs> especially, to Josh Jacobs. Like I, I was down on Josh Jacobs heading into this year, and I was dead wrong. I, I'm not afraid to admit that. He currently is the RB4 right now. He is more fantasy points than McCaffrey, 
Derrick Henry, Leonard Fournette, and I don't think people are valuing him. At, I think he's an RB1, but I don't think people are valuing him as one just yet. So I think you can, this is an opportunity where you can go out and buy high, get an RB1 without maybe paying that RB1 price. And I think this week, especially with the Raiders on a buy, if you can afford yeah. to wait, why not make the deal this week for a team that maybe is needy at running back and then you got, your, you got yourself a, a quality RB for the remainder of the season. I'm going to stay at running back, and I'm going to say Raheem Mostert. Now, let's just preface it this way. You're not giving up huge assets for Raheem Mostert, right? Like, I don't want, I don't want to get, you know, a tweet saying, hey, man, so I got Raheem Mostert, but I traded away James Robinson. Like, did I do good? And I'm like, no, you didn't. Don't do that. But Raheem Mostert is a guy who has taken over the backfield there in Miami. He's made uh, Chase Edmonds pretty much expendable in a lot of fantasy leagues. And as long as he stays healthy, I expect him to continue to get a big workload. And look, you're, if you're acquiring him, it's as maybe a third running back. It's as a depth option, but he does have a lot of potential in this offense. And I think, you know, right now he's probably just sitting on somebody's bench, not getting a whole lot of playing time right now. Yeah, and, and we've seen he's fully taken over from Chase Edmonds. So I, I think this is a good call. All right, so those are the guys we're trading for. Who's the guy you are trading away? This is going to cause some stirs, I think, but <laughs> I, I would trade, be looking to trade Dalvin Cook right now. And I'm not saying, like, get rid of him for anything, but there's definitely cause for concern with Dalvin Cook. We saw him get banged up earlier this year, and since then, his snaps have been dwindling. He played just 57% this past week. That's a season low. He has just four targets in his last three games combined. And meanwhile, while he's losing playing time alexander madison was more involved than ever like typically when dalvin cook plays we don't see a whole lot of madison we saw a whole lot of him this past week he had a season high in snaps uh he play had four targets he had a season high in carries it it's worrisome for dalvin cook but i think cook is still valued as an rb1 so you could trade him for say a josh jacobs or damian pierce or Brees hall and another piece i think but not a Raheem Mostert. Do not trade Dalvin <laughs> Cook for Raheem Mostert, at least not straight up. There better be some, some other pieces involved there. Yeah, the, the, the Dalvin Cook frustration I know is high. I had people in my mentions a couple of weeks ago saying they were done with him. I said to stay the course, but I think at this point, if you are, let's say you're one and four and you need help, it might be time yeah. to, to make the move. I still think you trade away Deontay Johnson at this point. He's still going to lead the Steelers in targets. He is the number one option in the passing game. But let's look at what kind of passing game it is right now. It's not very good. They've made the switch from Mitch Trubisky to Kenny Pickett, and that seems to have given it at least a little more life, but not enough that I feel great about starting Deontay Johnson. We're also seeing George Pickens get some more opportunities. Chase Claypool seems to have kind of vanished from relevance at this point. So here's the thing. You can trade Deontay Johnson. You can still sort of sell him as a wide receiver, too, to somebody and let them know that, hey, look, he's going to get a large target share, but... You can leave out the fact that it's not really amounting to much yardage-wise or touchdown-wise, but just say, hey, look at, look at all these targets Deontay Johnson's getting. You like targets. Take those targets. We know Deontay's better than this. Imagine what he's going to do with all this volume now. When he starts getting hot, when he and, and Kenny Pickett like, really connect and build a <laughs> rapport, it's going to be off the charts. So here, I'm just doing you a favor and, and you know, helping you out with Deontay Johnson. All right, it's time now for Preparation Equals Performance, presented by Castrol Edge. It's the part of the show where we talk about some sleepers heading into week six. And who is your first on the sleeper list? Alec Pierce, someone that uh, I hope you tried to pick up on waivers if he was out there in your leagues. But Alec Pierce has, has seen his targets, catches, and receiving yards increase every single game he has played this season. And last week on national TV, I think we, we really got to see him winning over Matt, Staff, uh, Matt Ryan. He led the Colts in every receiving category. I think he won over Matt Ryan, his trust. And I think he's going to be a big part of this passing offense. They need someone opposite of Pittman, and I think he's the guy. They absolutely need somebody opposite of Pittman. I'd like to see his snaps and his routes go up, but I think that's going to happen. I don't know how much longer they can really keep rolling with Paris Campbell, who's giving them nothing yeah. in the passing game. So you talked about Melvin Gordon, Melgo, as a start <laughs> this week. I like Mike Boone also as a sleeper for a lot of the same reasons. The Chargers' run defense has not been particularly great, and we saw last week Mike Boone get a number of opportunities in that game. And this was a backfield that even when Javante Williams was there, it was probably a 60-40 split in terms of the two backs. I imagine that's going to sort of continue where Gordon is going to be the lead back, 
So Mike Boone is going to get opportunities. We know he can catch the football. He is running it effectively as well. And as long as they aren't letting Rust cook too much, that means the running backs get a whole lot of work. And so I, I sort of like uh, Mike Boone in this one. Another sleeper for you this week. Uh, on Mike Boone, real quick, I, he showed explosiveness last week, mm -hmm. and I think that that greatly matters because that's what Javante Williams was in there for. Latavius mm -hmm. Murray isn't going to do that. So I, I really like Mike Boone uh, this week and moving forward as well. Uh, another sleeper, Corey Davis, because I know Garrett Wilson and Elijah Moore are the receivers that fantasy players want to see break out and are excited for. Uh, well, Corey Davis is Zach Wilson's guy right now. Like he has a 19% target share that's tied for the team lead with Garrett Wilson. He has a 28% air yard share that leads the Jets. It's just ahead of Elijah Moore. So he's getting the air yards that we like that Elijah Moore has been seeing. He's getting the targets that we like that Garrett Wilson's been seeing. At some point, we got to be like, hey, maybe Corey Davis is the wide receiver that actually is the one that we need to roster. I've here. pretty much given up on Elijah Moore now yeah. at this point. Uh, I, I had him as a sleeper a couple weeks ago. I think he finished with 11 yards. And at that point, I'm like, it's probably just not going to happen, at least not consistently for Elijah Moore. My last one is Joshua Kelly for the Chargers. So I'm going on both sides of that Chargers-Broncos game. And last year, there was talk that maybe Josh Kelly is going to really start to take away from Austin Eckler. And that, that didn't happen. In fact, we saw it two years ago where he had that great start to the season and then sort of vanished. Last year was not used very much. This year, though, he looks like a different player. He's getting opportunities. He's a lot more effective. Already has more rushing yards this year in five games than he did last year in 10 games. <laughs> Look, this is always going to be Austin Eckler's backfield. Don't confuse this for me saying he's going to take over the number one job. But it does look like the Chargers want to preserve Eckler as much as possible, which means you're going to see more Joshua Kelly. Sonny Michelle, after maybe the first week or two, hasn't been getting a whole lot of work. This feels like Joshua Kelly getting some opportunities. The Bronco run defense has been mediocre, and so I think there could be, again, this is deep leagues. We're not talking eight or ten team leagues. We're talking deeper leagues where Josh Kelly has some sleeper potential this week. Yeah, I mean, those who were on his hype train like two years ago, are, are <laughs> they can rejoice now. Yeah, it just it took the train took a little while to get there, but it <laughs> seems like it's pulling into the station right now. If you want more sleepers, of course, you can check out my weekly sleepers column. It is at NFL.com slash sleepers. I'll have those guys and some more to talk about, to read about, to possibly put into your lineup this week. And, of course, if you follow this show, one, we appreciate it. That We always appreciate the likes, the subscribers, the comments, all the stuff that you guys give us. But if you subscribe to this, you will get fantasy content in your podcast feed five days a week. You've got this show on Monday and Wednesdays. You've got the Fantasy Q&A show on Tuesdays and Fridays. And on Thursdays, you've got the Stardom sit -em show. So there's plenty for you to peruse in the NFL Fantasy app, NFL channel, and your favorite podcast provider. In the meantime, for us, that is it. We are done. We appreciate you hanging out with the NFL Fantasy Football Show presented by Subway. Try the Subway Series menu, your pick of 12 irresistible subs. You know the drill. Tell two friends to tell two friends. Rate, review, and remember, a synonym is a word you use when you can't spell the other one. Be safe, take care of yourselves, enjoy week six, and we'll talk to you next week.